Hey, welcome back, friends. Hear Me Out podcast. We got a special bubble edition of the podcast today. Joined by my brother BT, as always. Yes, sir. In the cut, in the cut, scary sight, and an even scarier sight, my boy Wolf and the <laughs> HMO OG, man. My boy Grady, so it's good, man. Oh, baby. How y'all doing? And we're doing good, yes, man. Sir. Welcome back, bro. This is our, this is our first... Uh, this is like our first webcam with uh with like a former HMO member or like anybody that's been like involved with HMO. Like we've been trying to get back in touch with some of the people for part twos and stuff. So this is dope, man. Thanks for coming, Brady. Uh, uh, right here. So we are gonna be discussing the bubble today. The NBA bubble in Orlando has been heating up, man, and the playoffs are right around the corner. They had I think it was eight seeding games per team. I think most teams are down to like their final or second to last game. So yeah. let's just go right into this, man. Brooks, what are your overall thoughts on the bubble play and how it's been affecting the players playing inside of that empty gym? So part one, um, I think it's been great having basketball back in general. Um, my main thought was like it would take, you know, maybe a game or two for everybody to get back into a rhythm and, you know, figure out what they want to do offensively and all that. But they were able to get into it like from game one really mm-hmm. and that's what makes the roads is being able to get back into that rhythm that quickly and i think you know having that training camp earlier plus the scrimmages and being able to work out one-on-one helped a whole lot so i've been impressed really with all the with all the basketball so far and then part two with just how it's affecting them i think it depends on who it is really i think someone like giannis i think it affected him somewhat because of the fact that like he's had so many blow ups past couple games like yesterday yeah, he, had a he low- did and then i think he had one two or three games ago i can't remember who it was with but he's had two issues and then you had like pg and dame they had their little big they had their little beef so i think it depends on who it is and i think it just depends on like the competitiveness competitiveness of, of people but i don't think it's gonna get crazy until like late in the playoffs when they haven't seen their family in forever but what was just saying that people can come and, and visit, so you know it might not be too bad. True that, yeah, yeah, they did just announce that Woj bomb as always. Brady, man, what are your overall thoughts on the bubble so far, seeding games? Yeah, uh, so I mean, uh, I kind of agree with Brooks, but then uh, also like kind of disagree too because I mean there are some players that definitely like were ready for the bubble, i.e. like T.J. Warren, uh, Devin Booker. Like, those heads. But then you see, like, a lot of people, like, Giannis, he's struggling a little bit. Not really struggling, but, like, the, I guess the pressure's kind of mounting to him. Then LeBron, his first few games, it took him, like, a little while to get, like, adjusted in rhythm. AD as well. Because I think it's, like, a whole new environment. And, like, I, I think essentially it's, like, bro, it's, like, gym hooping. You know what I mean? Like, like Definitely. no one's on your side, bro. It's, like, it's all skill talking now. And then, like, because I guess maybe some teams, they feed off the energy. Or, I mean, I mean, it's obvious people feed, like, the teams they feed – off the energy of the crowds and shit so now they got to find a new way to like get that energy and i don't know it's an interesting dynamic because like i guess it goes to show like you know players that necessarily wouldn't be like balling the fuck out in normal circumstances now they're like playing pretty well so i don't know it's interesting i still i still think people are getting i think they're still getting adjusted to it like 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 yon is blowing up and then like you know i guess there's like rumors about players like just a little stressed out because they're like they're feeling the cabin fever so I mean, it's cool to see, man, and I mean, it's definitely a new challenge, and I can't wait to see who's, like, really about that action and, like, who's, you know, who's a fraud. <laughs> That's what Thanks. we're learning a lot about these new players, about, not the new players, but we're learning a lot about how these guys, it's definitely a different environment, and, and like you guys said, TJ Warren, who could have predicted TJ Warren to come out and drop 31 a game, 53 on the Sixers, who are a good team, and Joel and B dropped forty points that game. Tobias yeah. Harris had thirty points, so that was a solid outing, man. Like T.J. Warren, even Devin Booker, who we already knew was a star. Like no one could have predicted that. And yeah. and as far as the L.A. guys, like Bron and A.D., do you guys think that that L.A. factor is important for them? Like maybe A.D. might be struggling a little bit because it's like, damn, I had that L.A. crowd, now I don't have any crowd. Do you guys think that L.A. effect is real or not really? I think it's a matter of being off for so long and then trying to figure out everything else on the fly. Really, um, yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't know if it's the home crowd or not because yeah. no one has home crowd advantage anymore. So Except it for doesn't magic. take. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't single it out to like just AD, bro. It's probably like a lot of heads, bro. Like they just 
it's LeBron probably super, too. You know what I mean? Like, you know what? Like, for example, like Lonzo Ball, man, he was having such like a great season, and then, bro, he comes to the bubble and just like breaks. Like, bro, I don't know, man. It's it might be a lot of dudes like just I guess not getting really acclimated to it, but maybe AD he's getting he's getting better adjusted, and and the Lakers, bro, they got pressure, man. They got they're the number one seed. They have it's like championship or bust for them, bro. There's the, like there's so I mean. You know, it's. It, I think it's just tough, bro, being a Laker. It's just tough being a Laker for. I'm telling you, so it, it should. It could be a little bit of that LA effect because you, we all saw what AD was doing at the beginning of the season. He was mm-hmm. arguably playing better than LeBron James, and now he's coming to the bubble and having like three for fourteens, three for elevens. Mm-hmm. Like that's not yeah. a superstar performance right there. That's that's pretty yeah. small. Yeah, definitely. So no, as but, far, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, dude, I, I think it's – I was just going to mention, man, like, the team is essentially kind of like – I mean, the, the face is LeBron because LeBron is the face of the league. But, bro, AD, he's – he's the, he's the that offense runs through him, bro. The team runs through him. And like, I'm sure LeBron will definitely, like, tell people, like, that the offense runs through AD. So, bro, it's a lot of pressure on AD low-key, bro. Like, he has a lot of shit going. So, yeah, and then true. on top of that, it's a, it's a contract year. Like, he can opt out. If he wanted to, he could step, like, off some fuck shit. Which I doubt he does, but you know what I mean. Never say never, bro. Never say never. Yo, never I don't know. Say- I don't know about y'all, man. But sometimes when I play two K, like they predict things that are gonna happen in the future. AD left the, the Lakers to go to Dallas. So if he goes to Dallas next year, that'll be wild. If that. Have you said down from like? Nah, I, so, go ahead, Brooks. My bad. My fault. I was just saying that that'd be like such a step down from LA as far as just like the stardom and the and the fame going from like LA to Dallas. Yeah. But that'd be a really good team to be around, actually, because yeah. Luca, KP, and AD. Oh my God! They need a third star, man, and they will be a, oh, like a contender star. every year. Then that means KP has to drop to like the third string All Star, and he might not be ready to to accept that role. Bro, and KP has been popping off. Bro. That's are, exactly I feel like what I was gonna say. On him. People are sleeping on him, but he is going. He is spazzing, bro. Like I love to see it because you know he had like. He had the down years with the ACL injury, and then, you know, he, of course he was a Nick. So, you know, I mean, it's, it's good to see him come up. Like, hopefully, him and him and Luca can be like a savage as one-two punch in the future. So let me go ahead and throw this stat out there for for those that have been watching the bubble and that follow Luca and the Mavs. Luca and Porzingis both are dropping thirty plus. They're both grabbing over nine boards a game. They're both <laughs> playing. They're both get like playing defense too. It's amazing the one-two punch that they got out there, and the fact that they haven't won more games. They're actually two and four in the bubble. And Damn, lot, yeah, that's wild. Yeah, that's man, because they they got to do a lot of things just them too. If they had that yeah. third star, like probably not Anthony Davis. I'm sure what they're looking for is like a they're probably looking for a shooter out there, like a third yeah. star who can shoot the rock. Maybe like a yeah. I don't know Bradley Beal, mm-hmm. somebody somebody yeah. uh, of that nature, but. Yeah, so bubble play has been crazy, and this new this new thing with the with like the fans on the side, it's crazy. Do you guys know like how that works? Cause I'm still not too sure how that works. Do you have to buy a ticket to have your face on there? So I saw someone do a TikTok about the process, and he was just emailing and calling a whole bunch of teams to see about being a virtual fan. And eventually, he got back from somebody, and they they just like got him on a Zoom call. He got introduced to like his fan section, and then he was able to be on a slate of games all day. It was like, damn. And it was like a Dallas game or something like that, and that uh, Miami game. So he was on calls all day with all these different teams. So I think it's basically just like finessing it somehow. Yeah, damn. That sounds like you gotta do like the most to do that, son. Yeah, for that real. does kind of sound like the most, but a, a memorable experience. Yeah. So we're gonna jump into this, man. I want to. I want to get your guys all bubble first team. It's actually happening. They're gonna separate the regular season, all teams and MVPs and stuff like that. They're gonna separate up until March 13th, I believe, when the play stopped, and then the bubble is gonna have its own 